Dr. Andrea Maddich. I'm a non-surgical sports medicine physician. I have lived, I grew up mostly in Utah, but I have lived in Oklahoma and Texas. So I did grow up skiing and can remember when we had uh, inexpensive tickets and uh, could skip school and go up and ski. So at this time of year, as it starts to get dark earlier and colder, everyone starts to look up in the mountains and see the snow cap and start to check snowfall at the ski resorts. It's pretty exciting. Um, so I am a sports medicine physician. I've been in practice for 14 years. I did my undergraduate at the University of Utah and in exercise physiology, I have a master's in nutrition. And then I went to medical school at St. Louis University and came back to the University of Utah for my residency and my sports medicine fellowship. And I spent a lot of time at the ski clinic treating ski injuries, and I have a lot of patients that are really excited for this ski season and snowboarding season to start. Awesome. You are the right person for us to be talking to tonight, it sounds like, for sure. Thank you. So let's just dive right in and um, start out by talking a little bit about who should be paying attention to this education we're going to go through tonight. Are there people at higher risk for ski and snowboard injuries? Yeah, I think we try to classify who's at risk for injury and a lot of studies will say that beginners or intermediate at our, are at a higher risk. Although I will say it kind of depends on the situation. Um, so I think that we know beginning snowboarders uh, are at our, a higher risk. However, if people are more advanced and they start to go like jumping off higher cliffs or drops and then the terrain park, they're actually at a higher risk than beginners. Um, there isn't necessarily an age range. There is sometimes they say younger, uh, younger skiers or snowboarders are, are at a little higher risk, but it depends on the injury. Um, I, I try not to pay too much attention to age because we can't modify that. So I don't care about that as much. I care about things that we can modify. And the biggest things are just risk takers. So if someone is a risk taker, um, has more risk taking behavior, that increases the risk. Um, also just being cold, so cold extremities or people that maybe aren't prepared with their equipment are at a higher risk. Um, and then people that may be skiing or snowboarding in conditions that they're not um, used to or familiar with. So. Uh, those tend to be the higher risk. There are about 96,000 ski and snowboarding injuries per year in the United States. Um, and if we look at like skier days, so how many days and skiers, it, um, it's about 1,600, which isn't too high, but. Well, sounds like you have a lot of experience with this <laughs> based on that answer. I'm sure you see an uptick in certain types of injuries once ski and snowboard season kicks off. So what are some of the more common injuries you see coming in through your clinic? So for skiers, it's definitely ACL tears or ACL sprains. I think knee injuries for skiers are a big one. And luckily there are some things that we can do to reduce risk of knee injuries. So 27 to 41% of Ski um, injuries are ACL sprains. Um, well, that that we see. So in some of the surveys, we'll say it's a it's an ACL. Um, skiers also get upper extremity injuries. So wrist sprains, wrist fractures, clavicle fractures, or collar collarbone fractures. Um, a shoulder sprain, AC sprain, uh, shoulder fractures, and then a particular one is a thumb sprain called skier's thumb. For snowboarders, it's a little bit different. So snowboarders tend to have more upper extremity, less knee. Um, if it is going to be lower extremity, it's hip and back. Um, because the boot is a little loose and it's softer, there's a particular kind of foot fracture that we will sometimes ski, uh, see with snowboarders. Um, but usually they have wrist sprains, wrist fractures, the same shoulder, AC sprain, clavicle fractures. So now we've learned all the things that can happen to us that are bad. So let's talk about prevention. 
what are some things that we can do to reduce the risk of injury? So I like to think of it in four categories. So the first one is going to be um, equipment. So check your equipment. They have done studies looking at ski shape. And so um, thinner skis with less shape tend to have a lower risk of injury. Um, I think that having the ski boot binding set correctly is very important. So if we do start to fall, we want that ski boot to release so we don't have the lever arm on it to twist the leg. Um, so that's really, really important. The boot fit and the binding is going to be very different. Things can change during the season or even from season to season. So, you know, if, if my foot grows or if I lose or gain weight or if someone has surgery or um, then that might change some of the swelling in the foot and you may need to really check your equipment. It's a very, it can be very difficult to get an appropriate fitting boot. And, you know, um, so make sure you get to know some experts with boot fit and have your bindings checked. That's a big one. Um, the other things that we can do as far as equipment are wrist guards. So especially beginner snowboarders, wrist guards reduce the risk of a wrist injury or a wrist fracture. Um, helmets are very important, so it does not reduce the risk or lower your risk of concussion, but it can lower risk of a laceration or a fracture. And so I would definitely recommend wrist guards for snowboarders, helmets for everyone, and then just the appropriate clothing. Um, like I mentioned initially, if we're cold, the muscles don't work the neuromuscular control goes down and risk of injury increases. So make sure you have layers, um, good socks, gloves, uh, and stay warm. Well, luckily for us, we still have a few weeks left to prepare ourselves before the ski resorts are open. Um, time to get all those great equipment and follow the advice you gave us. Um, are there other specific exercises and things that people can do to prepare during the preseason to reduce their risk of injury? And where can they go to find those resources? Yeah, so, um, so personal conditioning or uh, conditioning preseason is also very important. That's one of the, the tips, that's one of the four areas that we wanna work on. Um, especially with ACL injury prevention programs. And there are some places uh, that have exercises that you can go through. Specifically, we want to work on strength for the lower body. So quadricep strengthening, hamstring strengthening, hip and core strength. And usually we'll start with both legs together and then single leg strength. So you want to be working on um, each individual leg when we're skiing more than snowboarding, your weight is different and your control is different leg to leg. And so it's really important to work on rotational stability through the hip and the pelvis and single leg strength. The next thing that we work on are plyometrics or some jump exercises. So starting with two feet, jumping forward, back, side to side, and then people can jump up on a box, like box jumps. You always want to start jumping up instead of jumping off. And then once you're comfortable doing both legs, you can do a single leg. And then a lot of rotational stability and balance. And when we are falling or off, you want to make sure that that leg can correct and you can fix that balance. That's going to help prevent sitting back on the ski and kind of falling with the knee uh, falling in. There are some programs online. I just looked up YouTube and put in ski injury prevention, and I found um, there are several videos by a person, Alicia at Wilder, W-I-L-D-R, um, online fitness, and so she was a competitive skier and then physical therapist and has some really good a series of uh, more advanced conditioning exercises. I think if someone is more of a beginner, 
Um, there's also a good video with seven specific exercises um, and that's a good place to start. And then you can go to kind of the more advanced video videos, but it's called Game Changers, Seven Exercises to Prevent ACL Injuries. Um, and there is a, there's a exercise program called PEP, P-E-P, -E ACL Injury Prevention. It's, it was studied in soccer players. Um, and female soccer players had a, uh, have a higher risk of ACL tears than male. And so there was a program in Santa Monica that tested it. It's, it's all laid out on specific exercises. It takes about 10 to 20, uh, sorry, 15 to 20 minutes to do. Um, so if you add that several times a week and go through the program, um, it can help reduce the risk of ACL injuries by 70%. And that's in soccer players, but a lot of these exercises are similar. They're the same. Um, and it's free online. It's called PEP uh, ACL Injury Prevention. And then after we work on the checking our equipment, making sure that we're conditioning, which I would recommend starting right now, um, I also tell people to work on behavior. And so we have certain choices that we can do, like eating breakfast, making sure we get enough sleep the night before. If we're fatigued and tired, our muscles aren't going to be controlling our skiing. And so it's very important to make sure that we sleep well and eat well before going up the mountain. Um, and then make sure that we are making safe decisions. And so one of them is just slow down. Um, I think we know that people that are going higher velocity, they're going, if, if they do fall, it's easier to get out of control, it's harder to be aware of the terrain and the slope. And so slowing down will help prevent it. Only 2% of knee injuries was from collision with another skier. So the majority of it is just being out of control or maybe in a condition that we're not uh, expert with yet. So I would, um, you know, that's a behavioral choice that we can modify. Um, if you notice that your muscles are getting really fatigued and tired and you think, I'll just do one more run. It's always the, I always, I just decided to do one more run or I was on my way down. Um, I see a lot of people get injured. So if you're feeling tired, I would rather have you say, I, I will hold off today and we'll go another day um, so that, that we can manage that. And the other really thing, the thing that we can do is we can choose if we do the terrain park or not. We call it trauma park um, because there are just so many injuries. So have a discussion with your kids or family or your friends, if you're skiing with friends and they feel comfortable and maybe they're a little bit better and you do not feel comfortable, just you know make sure that you're making good choices because that's a very high risk situation. Um, and then the other thing are classes. So we know that um, classes are really, really helpful. I think they help us navigate the slope safer. Um, I have three kids and so when uh, I have twins, actually I know I went skiing and trying to teach three kids to ski at once was so hard. I my husband and I just said, you're going to, uh, we're getting you a lesson. And it was so helpful with twins because they don't want to follow each other and then the ski instructor can teach them. And it's really important to learn those safety skills sometimes from someone else besides the parent on how to approach the slope and navigate the slope in a safe way. So props to our Ski and snowboarder and, and snowboarding instructors. I think they're awesome and amazing. I've had really good experiences with them. That is all awesome advice. Thank you so much for going through that with us. Um, so let's say we ignore your awesome advice or something does happen regardless. Um, what should we do when we feel like we might have an injury that needs to get checked out? Yeah, I so some people get hurt and they can't make it down off the mountain. The um, ski patrol will be called and they'll be taken down. So 
honestly, if you're not able to make it down on your own and you have to be taken down by ski patrol, I would be thinking, okay, I need to have a visit. Now, if it's dislocated or a laceration, a big cut, any head or spine injury, um, you can either go to the emergency room, I would just go straight to the emergency room, or to the ski clinic there for an evaluation. Um, if needed, they'll ship to the emergency room. So any head or neck trauma, uh, dislocated joint, laceration, even abdominal trauma, those are things that I would just go to the emergency room for. If it is something that you think you can, like, oh, I tweaked it or I, I fell and it hurts, but I'll go home. Um, ice, rest, compression, elevation, maybe some anti-inflammatories or Tylenol. Um, if it stays swollen, so the next day if you wake up and it's really swollen, if you have limited range of motion, those are things that I would get checked. Especially if there's any numbness or you feel like there might be a nerve um, uh, a nerve injury, I would make sure to have that checked as well. Um, now, those are some places that you can go. So the ER, I would recommend if you have a musculoskeletal injury to make sure you go to a sports medicine clinic. Um, I work at Peak Orthopedics. We are a multi-specialty orthopedic clinic on the Lone Peak Hospital campus in Draper, Utah. Um, so we specialize in musculoskeletal injuries and we see a lot of skiers and snowboarders. We take care of a lot of athletes. So this is um, our specialty and where we have acute appointments that we save. So usually same day if you call in the morning or next day appointments are available for injuries like this. We don't want people having to wait two weeks to be seen um, if it's an acute injury. So make sure that you tell the front desk, um, I was snowboarding and, you know, I have I, I have back pain or my hip is hurting or I, I injured my wrist and that will be seen faster. That's good to know. I think a lot of people assume it's going to take weeks to get into a clinic. So that's a neat program that you guys are doing. Um, this has all been super helpful. It's making me excited to get out on my snowboard. So let's do a recap. Um, could you just go through and review your top safety tips for us one more time before we wrap up? Absolutely. So one is equipment. Make sure that you check your ski boot binding system, wear wrist guards specifically for beginner uh, snowboarders, helmets for everyone, uh, check your ski size and shape and update that equipment. Um, looking at conditions is important. So um, I, I don't know, conditions is sort of uh, making sure that the, the snow conditions are right as, if it, as it's getting icy or super heavy snow. We know that the risk of injury goes up. So uh, towards the end of the day, after a nice warm day, everything melts and then it starts to freeze. Um, the fatigue. So make sure to avoid fatigue by having a good breakfast, resting before, and once you can tell that that muscle control is starting to uh, be a little bit iffy, make sure you stop and go home. You'll survive to snowboard another day. Um, the other things are uh, be in the terrain park with caution. If you are good enough and your skills are uh, up to it, great. But if you do go in the terrain park, keep things at your level and don't be pushed into an area or a condition that you feel uncomfortable in. Please make sure you follow all of the rules posted um, at the ski resorts. So if they say don't go into a certain area, follow the ski resort guidelines. Um, if you are um, not in the ski resort and uh, you know, taking a class in avalanche safety, can also be very helpful, so be aware of avalanche safety. So that's the conditions, equipment, environment. Um, other things are just behavior. So make sure you're making those good choices. Go slow, uh, consider some lessons or classes so you know how to navigate the slope and the conditions in a safer way. And then personal conditioning. And 
I think everyone can start the personal conditioning now. That's all modifiable factors, things that we can control, that we can do, really focus on hip and core stability, start with both legs and then go to single leg, rotational stability, um, strength, and make sure that you can do a lot of reps because we wanna be able to spend four or five hours, not just 30 minutes on the slope. Um, I will say I have a lot of patients that are older or maybe just patients that have arthritis in a joint, so we don't want to do a lot of high impact jumping. You can strengthen your legs and improve that rotational stability without box jumps or plyometrics, but just really focus on um, like RDLs, Romanian deadlifts for, um, for strength and single leg exercises for stability. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Matic. Um, anything else you want to add or, or say to our audience before we sign off? I just, I want to make sure that we keep everyone safe. Um, I'm, I'm available if anyone does get hurt, but one of the, my least favorite conversations is having to tell people that they can't snowboard or ski for six weeks or you know, the rest of the season because there was uh, an, an injury and in that negotiation of when can I get back on the slopes is harder to have um, than, hey, I'm going to condition and make good choices so that I can stay on the slope.